Rheumatoid arthritis is the most common type of arthritis triggered by the immune system. Treatments have improved dramatically over the years and can help many of those affected. Joining me to share what we all need to know about rheumatoid arthritis is Dr. Rachel Holt, a board certified rheumatologist with Baptist Medical Group and the Andrews Institute. Dr. Holt, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Well, I know you got some great information, so let's just jump into a very basic question, I guess. What is rheumatoid arthritis and how does it differ from osteoarthritis? Sure. Um, well, like you alluded to, rheumatoid arthritis is really the most common um, kind of arthritis that's triggered by the immune system. Uh, when most of us think about arthritis, we're probably thinking about osteoarthritis, uh, which is the most common type of arthritis. It really comes with age and a lot of wear and tear. Um, alternatively, rheumatoid arthritis is, like I said, triggered by the immune system, and it involves the immune system attacking itself, uh, causing intense inflammation, swelling, pain of joints. Or what the, the person who has either one of these, is it a similar uh, effect though as far as difficulty in, in moving their hands or something like that? Absolutely. Um, rheumatoid arthritis generally involves more swelling and morning stiffness, but yes. Okay. Absolutely. So who's the, the greatest risk for this? Um, typically we think about females in their 30s and 40s um, getting rheumatoid arthritis, but um, in all honesty, babies get rheumatoid arthritis, six month um, old babies even, and um, actually a couple of weeks ago I diagnosed someone in their 80s with rheumatoid arthritis. So it really involves everyone, men and women alike. So what triggers it? Um, we don't really know that for sure. Uh, there are theories, um, we call it a double hit hypothesis, that there is some sort of genetic predisposition to rheumatoid arthritis and there's something else that comes along and triggers that immune system to really recognize your own joints as foreign and start attacking those joints. When you're talking about joints here, what joints are most typically affected? Sure. Um, generally, they're smaller joints of the hands, um, the knuckles, uh, the wrists. Um, ankles and feet, and that's really what we think about being involved, but any joint could be involved with rheumatoid arthritis, knees, hips, spine even, um, so it, it uh, really could involve any joint, but we typically think about it being those smaller joints. So what type of uh, conditions does this result in as far as really um, restriction? for the person or complications from the condition? Sure, well fortunately we have good treatments today as opposed to 20 or 30 years ago when we didn't. Um, so most people with rheumatoid arthritis can live an active life. Um, in the worst case scenario, uh, rheumatoid arthritis could involve organs um, such as the lung or uh, the liver. Um, it can also cause a vasculitis and what that is is it's inflammation of blood vessels um, in very uncontrolled arthritis. Some patients uh, develop anemia from ongoing inflammation, but like I said, with good treatment, you know, we try to keep these complications at a minimum. Well, what are some of the symptoms a person might have and how might these symptoms vary between these two types of arthritis? Sure. In general, osteoarthritis comes on slowly over a course of years. Um, rheumatoid arthritis can also come on slowly, but can also have a very abrupt onset um, and, like I said, involve intense inflammation and pain in these joints. Uh, swelling and redness, and really a prolonged morning stiffness is what differs these two room, these two arthritis mm -hmm. from each other. Um, you hear a patient say that they're stiff for hours in the morning before they can really loosen up. Well, how's it diagnosed? I mean, a lot of people say, I just don't move very fast in the morning, my right. back hurts until I take a shower. You know, we have these typical aches and pains. So, right. um, how is this really diagnosed and identified as rheumatoid arthritis? Sure, well as rheumatologists we look at the whole picture. Um, it, uh, a lot of it is by history uh, and physical exam, which I think are the most important things in diagnosing in any condition. Um, there are lab tests uh, that we can do to identify rheumatoid arthritis and then in long-standing arthritis there will also be changes on x-ray um, that can help in the diagnosis. Okay, so um, is this something that someone should bring to the attention of their primary care physician? Should they seek out a specialist? How do they do this? Absolutely. If um, you have any ongoing arthritis that lasts more than a couple of weeks, I think it's very important to talk to your primary care doctor about it. And primary care doctors are trained to be able to um, identify whether it's osteoarthritis or something that's more serious like rheumatoid arthritis. And at that point, they would want to refer to a rheumatologist for okay. a workup. Okay, well, is there a cure? There are very good treatments. There's no cure, so to okay. speak. Um, about 8% of patients can go into remission with aggressive um, treatment right from the get-go. Um, but the treatments that we have today do um, 
um, suppress the immune system and suppress that immune response against the patient's joints. Um, so it's very treatable, but to date, really no cure. Okay. Well, tell us about some of these treatments. Sure. I mean, are they, you know, is it medicine that you take? Is it sure. exercise that you do? Tell us about the different types of treatments. Sure. Um, the treatments that are, they really involve um, immune modulating treatment. Um, any kind of uh, medicine that we use generally will suppress the immune system somewhat, not to the point where we can't fight infections, but we want to be able to suppress that immune system where it's not attacking the joints. Um, generally, people start out on medication that is in a pill form, um, and then in more severe rheumatoid arthritis, um, sometimes it's IV medications or uh, injection medications to be able to control those symptoms. And so this would be an ongoing treatment? Absolutely. Well, what's the long-term effect, talking about ongoing, what is the long-term effect of someone who's been diagnosed with this? Sure. Untreated, it can be devastating. Um, I think we've all seen the people that have um, joints that have been involved with arthritis and um, um, have developed these severe joint deformities. Nowadays, we really shouldn't see that anymore because we do have such effective treatments. Um, so for most people, you can live a healthy life and maintain your activities of daily living without a problem. Well, how do most people handle the treatment? Very well, very well. Um, it is very um, patient specific. Sometimes people, just like every other medicine, people have side effects too. And so you really have to try to figure out what's right for each patient. Um, but there are so many out there now and, and more coming out every year. Um, we really have a lot in our uh, armory, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to find the right medication for the right patient. Well, what would be the first thing that someone would look for in themselves to say, hey, I really need to consult somebody? You know, what's, what's the beginning? It's always easier to get things in the beginning. So sure. what is that first thing that they notice? Sure. Um, severe pain. Um, any pain that's limiting what you can do on a daily basis, uh, tying your shoes, buttoning your shirt, that kind of thing, you should definitely uh, seek out the attention of your primary care doctor at least and let them know what's going on so a further workup can, can uh, be worked on. Well, great. Well, uh, one last question. Where can our viewers get more information? Sure. Um, you can call um, our office at 850-437-8640 or you can visit our website at www.baptistmedicalgroup.org. Great. Well, thank you, Dr. Holt. We thank really you. appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. It's great much. information. Thanks for having me.